In this lecture, we shall discuss the taking of evidence by commission. What essentially we shall be discussing is this, in this lecture are the circumstances under which the High Court or the Circuit Court can dispense with the personal attendance of a witness whose evidence is required for the trial, but rather directs a district court located at where that witness is to take their evidence and bring to the high court. So, for example, we shall explore in this lecture how a high court resident at, for example, Boku, Boku, who needs the evidence of a witness who is resident at Akradi. And then the high court is conducting a criminal case. And the evidence of that witness at Akradi is very crucial to the case pending at the high court in Boku. And under the circumstances of the case, it would appear that it may be unreasonable to ensure that the witness travels from Takradi to attend court at Boku to give evidence. We are going to explore what the High Court can do under that circumstance. We will explore how the High Court in Boku, for example, can issue a commission to the person at Takradi so that the district court as where well that person is can take the evidence of that person and then bring it to the High Court at Boku for the trial to continue. That is essentially what we are going to discuss in this lecture. That is what we mean by every taking of evidence by commission. Because sometimes you are conducting the case at let's say Takradi and then somebody resident far away at Kumasi and that person's evidence is seriously required for the trial to proceed but the person is not at Takradi. And you realize that under the circumstance it might be unreasonable to say that the person should attend the court personally. Let's see what the court allows the high court at Takradi to do under such a circumstance. I shall begin this lecture by referring to the words in a scholarly book, which is the book authored by Denis Dominique J. And the book is titled Criminal Procedure and Practice in Ghana. This book is a very critical book that simplifies criminal procedure in Ghana and it is authored by Justice then is Dominica J. Now, when you read page 249 of the book, the learned author gives an insight as far as the powers of the high court or the circuit court who requires the attendance of a witness, but who, which is not, the witness who is not present at where the high court is, to issue a commission to the district court at where that witness is. To, for the district court to take the evidence of that particular witness. So let's see what the learned author says in his book at page 249. And I read. The high court or a circuit court may dispense with the personal attendance of a witness whose evidence is necessary for the ends of justice but will be unreasonable in the circumstances to procure the attendance of that witness to appear before it to give evidence. The court may issue a commission to a district court within whose jurisdiction that person resides to take the evidence of the witness. I'm taking that portion again. The court, and the court over here is being referred to the high court or the circuit court. So the court may issue a commission to a district court within whose jurisdiction that person resides to take the evidence of the witness. There are two main factors which determine the issue of commission for examination of a witness by a district court on behalf of the high court or a circuit court. I'm reading this portion 
once again. And I'm reading from page 249 of the book titled Criminal Procedure and Practice in Ghana, authored by Justice Dennis Dominique G. Page 249. This is what the learned author says. The High Court or a Circuit Court may dispense with the personal attendance of a witness whose evidence is necessary for the end of justice, but will be unreasonable in the circumstances to procure the attendance of that witness to appear before it to give evidence. The court may issue a commission to a district court within whose jurisdiction that person resides to take the evidence of the witness. There are two main factors which determine the issue of commission for examination of a witness by a district court on behalf of the high court or a circuit court. The first consideration is that the witness is a material witness for one of the parties and the evidence of that witness is necessary for the ends of justice. So take note, it says that the first consideration is that the witness is a material witness for one of the parties and the evidence of that witness is necessary for the ends of justice. The second consideration is that the personal attendance cannot be procured by the court which is hearing the matter without delay, expense, and inconvenience. which in the circumstances of the case will render it unreasonable. So take note of the two considerations the learned author has mentioned. The first consideration is that the witness is a material witness for one of the parties and the evidence of that witness is necessary for the ends of justice. So the, it must not be just any witness. It must be a material witness for one of the parties. And secondly, the personal attendance of that person cannot be procured by the court which is hearing the matter without delay, expense, and inconvenience, which in the circumstances of the case will render it unreasonable. And he proceeds to give an example. An example is where a case is being heard by the High Court or Circuit Court in Accra. And a material witness in the case for one of the parties is in Boku. It will better serve the end of justice to appoint the magistrates and the district courts in Boku to take evidence of that witness on commission. The magistrate on receipt of the commission shall proceed to take the shall proceed to the place where the witness is or may issue summons to compel the attendance of the witness before that magistrate. So again, the magistrate on receipt of the commission. And that's the commission that has been issued by the High Court or the Circuit Court. So the magistrate on receipt of the commission shall proceed to the place where the witness is. Or he may issue summons to compel the attendance of the witness before that magistrate. The magistrate shall then proceed to take down the evidence of the witness after being satisfied that sufficient notice has been given to the parties and the lawyer for the accused, if any, and for that purpose, shall exercise the powers of the trial court. It means that when the magistrate receives the commission, he shall proceed to the place where the witness is, or shall summon the witness to appear before that magistrate. And when the witness appears, the magistrate shall proceed to take down the evidence of the witness. After the magistrate is satisfied that sufficient notice has been given to the parties and also the lawyer for the accused, if any, and for that purpose shall exercise the powers of the trial court. It means that when the magistrate is taking the evidence, it shall exercise the powers of the circuit court or the high court that issued the commission. In practice, a party who wants the evidence of that witness to be taken shall apply to the court for that purpose. So if you are a party in the high court or the circuit court and you want that evidence to be taken, you can apply to the court for the court to issue the commission directed against that district court for the evidence to be taken. And the application may be oral or otherwise for the other party also to be heard. So these words of the learned justice 
and author Dennis Dominique J in his book, Criminal Procedure and Practice in Ghana at page 249 is very critical. He tells us that the high court or circuit court may dispense with the personal attendance of a witness whose evidence is necessary for the ends of justice, but will be unreasonable in the circumstances to procure the attendance of that witness to appear before it to give evidence. The court may issue a commission to a district court within whose jurisdiction that person resides to take the evidence of the witness. He goes ahead to give us the two main factors which will determine the issuance of this commission for the examination of a witness by a district court on behalf of the high court or a circuit court. The first consideration he gives is that the witness must be a material witness for one of the parties. And the evidence of that witness too must be necessary for the ends of justice. So first consideration, the witness must be a material witness for one of the parties and the evidence of that witness must be necessary for the ends of justice. The second consideration is that the personal attendance of that witness cannot be procured by the court which is hearing the case without delay, without delay, expense, and inconvenience which in the circumstances of the case will render it unreasonable for the witness to come to the high court or secret court to testify. And it goes out to give an example. An example is where a case is being heard by the high court or secret court in Accra. And the material witness in the case for one of the parties is in Boku. It will better serve the end of justice to appoint the magistrates at the district court in Boku to take evidence of that witness on commission. Then it tells us, that the magistrate, when he receives the commission, shall proceed to the place where the witness is, or may issue summons to compel the attendance of the witness before the magistrate. And he asks that the magistrate shall then proceed to take down the evidence of the witness after the magistrate is satisfied that sufficient notice has been given to the parties and the lawyer for the accused, if any. And for that purpose, the magistrate shall exercise the powers of the trial court. Now, I want us to look at the provision in the Criminal and Other Offenses Procedure Act that allows the High Court and the Circuit Court to exercise these powers. All that has been said is authorized by Section 124 of the Criminal and Other Offenses Act, 1960 Act 30, Section 124, and it is headed, Issue of Commission for Examination of Witnesses. It reads as follows, and I read. Where the high court or a circuit court where the high court or a circuit court is satisfied a that the examination of a witness is necessary for the ends of justice and b the attendance of that witness cannot be procured without a delay, expense or inconvenience, which in the circumstances of the case would be unreasonable. The court may dispense with attendance and issue a commission to a district magistrate within the area of whose jurisdiction the witness resides to take the evidence of the witness. So section 124 of the Act 30 is what gives the high court or the circuit court the power to issue a commission directed at the district magistrate within whose jurisdiction the witness resides to take the evidence of that witness. Then section 124, subsection 2, reads as follows, and I quote, The magistrate to whom the commission is issued shall proceed to the place where the witness is, or shall summon the witness, and after the magistrate is satisfied that sufficient notice has been given to the parties to the proceedings, the magistrate shall take down the evidence of the witness in the same manner, and for this purpose, exercise the same powers as in the case of a trial. Again, the magistrate to whom the commission is issued shall proceed to the place where the witness is or shall summon the witness. And after the magistrate is satisfied that sufficient notice has been given to the parties to the proceedings, that is when the magistrate shall then take down the evidence of the witness in the same manner and for this purpose, exercise the same powers as in the case of a trial. 
That's why we say that the magistrates shall exercise the powers of the trial courts. So one thing I needed to note about this section 124, if you look at the heading, and that's section one is that it says where the high court or a circuit court is satisfied. So the issuance of the commission is emanating from the high court or the circuit court, directed against the district court. In other words, it's the high court or the circuit court which is here in a criminal matter. And that is the one that will issue the summons to a district court in another area to take the evidence of that particular witness. But I have a question. That what if the trial is being conducted by a district court? So what if the case is pending before a district court? So let's say what if the district court at Teshim is hearing a case? And they realize that there's the witness whose evidence is necessary, who is living at Tamale. And Teshi is in Accra, Tamale. So Teshi is in Accra, and there's a witness at Tamale, or witness at Kumasi, whose evidence is really necessary, and they want to get the evidence of that witness for the criminal trial. Can the magistrate or the district court in Teshi issue a commission to another district court at Kumasi? to compel that district court at Kumasi to take the evidence of that person and bring back the evidence to the district court. Because I'm asking this question because section 124 of our case is headed where the high court or a circuit court is satisfied. So I want to find out whether the district court can also issue a commission against another district court for the taking of evidence of a witness resident as where the other district court is. And I'm asking this question because under section 124 of Act 30, the Act provides for the High Court or Circuit Court issuing a commission to a district court to take the evidence of a witness who resides as where that district court is, to take the evidence. And my question is that, can the district court attention, who is also conducting a criminal trial, and realizes that there's a witness resident at Kumasi, can the district court also issue a commission directed at another district court to take the evidence of that witness residing as Kumasi and bring the evidence to the high court in Accra. For the answer to this question, we'll have to look at page 25 of the book titled Criminal Procedure and Practice in Ghana, authored by Dennis Dominique J. And we also have to look at section 125 of the Act 30. So I shall begin with page 25 of the book titled Criminal Procedure and Practice in Ghana authored by Dennis Dominique J. And this is what the learned author says, and I quote, A magistrate lacks jurisdiction to issue a commission to direct another magistrate to take evidence on behalf of that magistrate, even where the magistrate is satisfied that the interest of justice will be achieved if the evidence of that material witness is taken. I'm taking that portion again. A magistrate lacks jurisdiction to issue a commission to direct another magistrate to take evidence on behalf of that magistrate, even where the magistrate is satisfied that the interest of justice will be achieved if the evidence of that material witness is taken. So what is he saying essentially? That the district court in Accra, Teshi, lacks the jurisdiction to issue a commission to another magistrate as Kumasi for that magistrate in Kumasi to take evidence on behalf of the magistrate's intention. It means that if you are a magistrate in Teshi, in Accra, and you are hearing a criminal case, you lack the jurisdiction to issue a commission to direct another magistrate at Kumasi to take evidence on behalf of you, the magistrate at Teshi. Even though you, the magistrate in Teshi, you are satisfied that the interest of justice will be achieved if the evidence of the material witness is taken. The Leonard author continues at page 25 as follows. The procedure prescribed for a magistrate to issue a commission to another magistrate when satisfied that the evidence of that person is material and that the person's evidence is necessary for the ends of justice by the inconvenience or delay or cause involved to get that person is unreasonable, the magistrate shall apply to the high court or the circuit court with reasons. So the magistrate must apply to the high court or circuit court and give reasons why they think that they need that particular evidence. So you see, it's not that the magistrate can automatically compel another magistrate to take the evidence. The magistrate must, issue, must apply to the high court. 
So it must apply to the high court or the second court with, with reasons. And the court, after hearing the application, and the parties may grant it an issue a commission to be served on the magistrates to proceed to take the evidence of the witness or may refuse it. So it's not that the magistrate is totally handicapped. If they, if your magistrate's intention, and you think you want to take the evidence of a witness, Akumasi, please, what we are being informed of is that you, the magistrate, you must apply to the high court or the circuit court and tell the high court or circuit court that you want the evidence of this witness in Kumasi so that the high court or the circuit court will be the one who hear the application and may grant it and then issue the commission to be served on the magistrate of Kumasi. So you, the magistrate, cannot swore more to on your own, just direct the other magistrate of Kumasi to the evidence. No. You must apply to the high court or the circuit court and the high court or circuit court will then issue the commission to the people at Kumasi to take the evidence. The magistrate who is served with commission shall give notice to the witness and the parties be proceed to the witness to take the evidence or cause the witness to appear before that magistrate in the court. So the same way, once the high court issues the commission, then that magistrate shall then proceed to wherever the person is and then take the evidence or shall issue a summons to compare the attendance of that person before the magistrate not give the evidence. So, where do we see this provision to in the Act 30? Section 125 of the Act 30 is what provides for the magistrates applying to the high court or the circuit court for the issuance of that particular commission. Section 125 of Act 30 reads as follows, and I quote, Where in the course of an inquiry, a trial, or any other proceedings under this act before a district magistrate, it appears A, that a commission ought to be issued for the examination of a witness whose evidence is necessary for the ends of justice, and B, that the attendance of that witness cannot be procured without a delay, expense, or inconvenience, which in the circumstances of the case would be unreasonable, the magistrate shall apply to the high court or a circuit court stating the reasons for the application and the courts may issue a commission in the prescribed manner provided or reject the application. So the magistrate shall apply to the high court or a circuit court stating the reasons for the application and the courts may issue a commission in the prescribed manner provided or reject the application. So take note that the magistrate cannot sue more to direct another magistrate. You must apply to the high court or the circuit court. State the reasons. And the high court is the one that may issue the commission or may reject the application. So when the high court issues the summons, and then the magistrate at Boku now proceeds to go and take the evidence, can the parties to the case in Accra, can they go and cross-examine the witness in Boku? What I mean is that if the trial is ongoing in Accra and then the magistrate applies to the high court for the issuance of a summons and the high court grants it that the evidence, the district court at Boku should take evidence of the witness over there. The people in Accra, can they go to Boku and go and cross-examine the people? The answer is under section 126 of that 30 and it provides as follows. The parties to the proceedings under this act in which a commission is issued may respectively forward the interrogatories in writing which the court directing the commission may think relevant to the issue and the district magistrate to whom the commission is directed shall examine the witness on those interrogatories let me explain this you are hearing the case in accra you are a lawyer in accra the magistrate has applied to the high court in accra they have issued a commission directed against the district court alboku to take evidence but you can't go there to go and cross-examine because maybe you too, you can't, it's too far for you or you have other things that make it practically impossible to make you go there. You can just draft your interrogators, your questions, that when the person takes the evidence, magistrate, ask him these questions and record his answers for me. That's what we refer to as interrogators. 
So rather than going there, you can just prepare your questions, forward it to that magistrate. Then when he takes the evidence, he should ask him these questions. And when he asks him those questions, he should record the answers for you. That's what section 126, subsection 1 over 13 means by saying that the parties in to the proceedings under this act, in which a commission is issued, may respectively forward the interrogators in writing, which the court directing the commission may think relevant to the issue. And the district magistrate to whom the commission is directed shall examine the witness on those interrogatories. Subsection 2. A party to proceedings under this act may appear before the magistrate by counsel or in person and may examine, cross examine, and re examine the witness. Again, if you want to go there physically too, rather than sending your interrogatories, the act allows you under section 126, subsection 2. That the party to the proceedings may appear before the magistrate by counsel or in person and may examine, cross examine, and re examine the witness. Now, when the magistrate is taking the evidence, is it mandatory that the magistrate must take the evidence in the presence of the accused? Look at section 126, subsection 3. It says that it is not necessary for the, depo the, the deposition to be taken in the presence of the accused if the accused or counsel of the accused had the opportunity to cross-examine the witness. It is not necessary for the deposition to be taken in the presence of the accused, and if the accused or counsel of the accused had the opportunity to cross-examine the witness. Now let's go to section 127. After the commission has been taken by the district court, what happens? So the court is ongoing at station in Accra. Then you direct the you apply to the high court. Then they issue a commission to to the with the Kumasi or Boku. And then the evidence is taken over there. Now they are done. What must they do to the evidence? They must bring it back to Accra. The answer is on section 127 of the 30. It says after the commission is issued under section 124 or 125 has been duly executed, it shall be returned together with the deposition of the witness, examined to the court, which issued it, and the commission, the return of the commission, and the deposition shall be open during normal working hours to inspection of the parties, and may, subject to just exceptions, be read in evidence in the case by either party and shall form part of the record. Again, after the commission issued under section 124 or 125 has been duly executed, it shall be returned together with the deposition of the witness, examined to the court which issued it and the commission. So it means that after the commission has been issued under 124 or 125, 124 deals with when the high court or the circuit court is issuing the commission to the district court. 125 deals with when the district court applies to the high court to issue the commission. So after the commission has been issued under 124 or 125, it shall be returned together with the deposition of the witness examined to the court, which issued it and the commission. The return of the commission and the deposition shall be open during normal working hours to inspection of the parties and may subject to just exceptions be read in the evidence in the case by other party and shall form part of the record. So what it means is that once we bring back the evidence taken in Boku, we'll come and read it and it may form part of the evidence before this court. Because that's the whole reason for which we even issue the commission. Because we want you to go and take the evidence and bring it to the court. So it may be open during normal working hours to inspection of the parties and may subject to just exceptions. Be read in evidence in the case by either party and shall form part of the record. Now, section 128 of Act 30 reads as follows. Where a commission is issued under section 124 or 125, remember section 124 is what deals with the high court or the circuit court issuing a commission directed at the district court to take the evidence. And 125 deals with when the district court or the, district court or the magistrates applies to the high court or the circuit court for the issuance of the commission. So section 128 reads as follows. Where a commission is issued under section 124 or 125, the inquiry, trial, or other proceeding may be adjourned for a specified time reasonably sufficient for the execution and return of the commission. So we are here in the case in Accra. 
we need the evidence of this person. When the commission is issued, we may adjourn for a reasonable time. That it will take maybe three weeks or one month for this to be taken. So we adjourn for a reasonable time for the execution and return of the commission. So that is what we mean by taking of evidence by commission. Remember section 124. It deals with the high court or the circuit court issuing the commission on their own. When the high court or the circuit court is here in a criminal case and they cannot procure the attendance of a witness who is very material, and the witness is far away, the High Court or the Circuit Court can issue a summons directed at the district court in the area where the witness is resident to take the evidence of that person. But remember, under Section 125, the district courts cannot automatically issue their own summons or commission. They must apply if they want that evidence. They must apply to the High Court or the Circuit Court for the issuance of the commission directed at the person uh, at the district court at where they want to take the evidence at. So the district court cannot so motu, as Denz Ajay said, that the district court lacks the jurisdiction to issue a summons or a commission to another district court to take the evidence on behalf of that district court. No. The district court must apply to the high court or circuit court. And then when you apply to the high court or the circuit court, then that is when you apply and the high court or circuit court may grant or refuse your application. Now, there's a case that sums up this particular provision about taking of commission. In the case of Apia versus the Republic, reported in 1987-88, two Ghana law reports at page 377. These are the brief facts of the case as gathered from the head notes. A was the special prosecutor of the public tribunal. He was arraigned before the circuit court, Accra, on a charge of extortion for demanding and obtaining from two persons, D and O, who were fugitives from justice, and whose cases were then before the special tribunal, the sum of £1,000 and £10,000 standing respectively. It was the case for the prosecution that those sums had been paid into A's then dormant account with Barclays Bank International London. Take note of this part very carefully. It will lead us to the crucial aspect of this case. Please take note. They say that it was a case of the prosecution that those sums were paid into A's dormant account, that is the accused person's account, which was at Barclays Bank International, London. So how would the prosecution know that, because you're in Ghana, how do you have this evidence? So in support of that case, the prosecution tended into Ireland, A, the bank gyro checks from D and O paid into the accused person's account. They also tended B, two checks of £100 each, drawn by A, an accused person. After those payments, even though the payments A had only £110.41 turned into his credits. And C, this is where the crucial evidence comes from. C, they also tended an affidavit sworn to in London by an official of the bank which confirmed the state of A's account, which the court had secured on a commission. And the court had secured on what? A commission. So, what I want you to notice that A was a special prosecutor of the public tribunal and was arraigned before the circuit court. So, it means that the circuit court who wanted the information about things that happened in London, they issued a commission to go and take evidence in London. What do you think? Do you think the circuit court in Accra can issue a commission to London so that somebody can give evidence over there in London and to be brought back to be tendered as evidence in Ghana? What do you think? Because if you take a critical look at section 125, 124, that deals with the circuit court aspects. 124 says that where the high court or circuit court is satisfied, that the examination of a witness is necessary. It says it may issue a commission to a district magistrate within the area of whose jurisdiction the witness resides. So in this case, where the circuit court issued a commission, not to a district court, but to London, to secure evidence by commission. Do you think that, in this case, what the circuit court that did was lawful? Do you think that it was sanctioned by law? Especially when Section 124 expressly mentions that 
the high court or the circuit court shall issue the commission to a district magistrate. What do you think the implication of that will be? Would that evidence be admissible or soon be admissible? Because the act expressly mentions that a high court or circuit court shall issue the commission to the district magistrate. What was held in this case? The court held per Francois GSE at page 377 of the report. And remember, we are referring to the case of Apia versus the Republic, reported in 1987-88, two Ghana law report at page 377. This is what the court held. For a final consideration, and I'm reading the words of Francois GSE. For a final consideration, we turn to the affidavit from David, from Malcolm John Davis, Esquire, a former senior assistant manager of Barclays Bank International Limited, Oceanic House, Coxpear Street, London, exhibits ZR3. In that affidavit, Mr. Davis merely verifies the appellant's account as shown in the books and ledgers of Barclays Bank International. This affidavit is made in pursuance of a request by the circuit court to the senior master of the Supreme Court of Judicature England and bearing the imprimatur of authenticity is dated 1981. Again, this affidavit is made, this affidavit made in pursuance of a request by the circuit court to the senior master of the Supreme Court of Judicature England and bearing the imprimatur of authenticity is dated 10 August 1981. A realization of the damaging effects of the affidavit of Malcolm David Esquire has consequently provoked challenges to its admissibility. We may add that the securing of the affidavit by commission is sanctioned by sections 124 to 127 of the Criminal Procedure Code 1960 at 30. These are the words of Francois GSE. That the court sanctions the procurement of evidence by commission that can be directed against somebody who is resident out of the jurisdiction. And I have a problem with this position. And my problem stems from the fact that Section 124 gives the High Court or the Second Court the power to issue the commission directed against the district magistrates. And I don't think it extends to London. And it's therefore not surprising that in this case, Taylor GSE gave a dissenting opinion, a very powerful one, which aligns with my challenge I have with this case. And for its import, may I read the words of Taylor GSE? This is what Taylor GSE says, and I quote It is clear to me, however, contrary to the views expressed this morning by the majority concerning Section 124 of the Criminal Procedure Code, 1960 Act 30. That no matter how that section is read, it specifically applies only to commissions issued by our courts to inferior courts in Ghana and not to any tribunal or court exercising foreign jurisdiction. In any case, the circuit court did not purport to exercise any power under the provisions of Section 124 of Act 30. That section gives the power to the High Court or Circuit Court to issue commission to a magistrate in Ghana. And when issued, the magistrate is mandatorily required to comply with the terms of the commission. Our High Court and Circuit Court have no, jurist, have no power to order any magistrate in a foreign country to do anything. A very casual reading of the provision demonstrates that this is so. So this is the dissenting opinion of Taylor GSE. He's saying that if you read section 124, it only says that, please, it's only the High Court or the Circuit Court that can issue the, the commission against a district magistrate. And so you can't say that you are going to issue the commission against somebody who is the foreign country. And that's the dissenting opinion of Taylor GSE. But remember, it's dissenting. So until we have a new decision, the majority view in the case of Appear versus the Republic is that section 124 can even apply to issuing commissions to foreign jurisdictions. However much I disagree with this, it remains the position of the law. And what the last said is only a dissenting opinion. I want you to take note of that. 
So therefore, what have we done so far in this lecture? We've mentioned that in this lecture, there are times when the court hearing a criminal trial may want to take the evidence of a witness, but it may not be able to procure the attendance of the witness without unnecessary expense or undue delay. So, if that happens, then what do we do next? Section 124 deals with the High Court or the Circuit Court. They can issue the summons against another district court to take the evidence. And when it happens that way, the accused or his lawyer can go there and go and cross-examine that witness or they can also send interrogatories. What if the matter is before the district court? Section 125 is instructive. 125 says that if it's before the district court, the district court must apply to the high court or the circuit court for the issuance of the commission to be directed against the circuit court or the district, uh, to be directed against the district court to take the evidence. And the high court or the circuit court may refuse or grant the application. And remember the case of appeal versus the public about whether the commission can be directed against people out of the jurisdiction. In that case, the majority view was that the commission secured in London was in accordance with section 124 of the Evidence Act. And remember my disagreement that section 124 only deals with the High Court or Circuit Court issuing a summons to a district magistrate in Ghana. And that view too was expressed by Taylor GSC in the case of Appear versus the Republic. This shall be the end of this lecture. And in our next lecture, we shall deal with the we shall deal with the preservation of evidence in certain cases. So in our next lecture, we'll look at instances where somebody is dangerously ill, and maybe you know that before you might hear the case, the person may end up dying and may not recover. What can you do to that kind of evidence of that particular person? We shall deal with that in our next lecture. But for now, we have dealt with commission for the examination of witnesses. And that is 124 to 127 of the Act 30. Thank you.